What is stocking density and, and why you're so focused on that and so important? Yeah, so stocking density is the amount of pounds of animals you have in a given area of space that they're actively grazing on. So right here, this is a little probably around 500 head. If you count all the calves, they're kind of scattered out under the fences. If you round that down to like animal units, like, like a thousand pound animal units, probably 370, 380 animal units. And this is about a half an acre of space. If you take out the tree, they can't stand in which puts you around 600 to 800,000 pounds to an acre stock in density. So 380 animal units in a half an acre of space. That density is just what turns over the magic. It's what allows you to get high consumption and efficiency utilization. It's what gets that high hoof impact, that even manure spread, that soil surface where you got the, like, the dirt exposed enough that all the seed bank will come in and activate. It's where all the magic happens of really having it mimic the way the dense bison herds used to graze. Because what would be I know it's kind of vague, but like say you, you drive out to just again a giant, probably five acre pasture and there's only like 20 cows. What's the difference from their stocking density compared to this? I mean, an open set stock range, ranch, you could be anywhere from, oh man, like a couple hundred pounds to an acre to maybe tops five or 10,000 pounds to an acre. A lot of rotational daily move ranches are at like 50 to maybe 100,000 pounds to an acre. So we're significantly more dense the way we're grazing than even most regenerative farms. And then how, as you're continuing on this process, you know, and, and growing the herd too, how do you balance that with the, the density rate? Or is it whenever you're adjusting the paddocks, you adjust the sizes and is it, cause it feels like it's just kind of constantly moving the pieces and then mm -hmm. seeing the results and then, you know, iterating on that. Is that right? So what I've trained the team in is the smaller the paddock, the higher the intensity of graze, the better. So, our size of paddock is purely based upon animal temperament of the animals we bought in and whether or not the shy ones are willing to go in the section. So we make it as small as we can get it where all the shy animals get in there and healthily graze. And then to give them more feed, it's just more moves per day. Hmm. Perfect. I'm trying to think if there's any... The reason for that is basically when the, the tighter pack they are, the, there's like a competition drive where they see the, all these other animals around them and if I don't go eat that, then it's going to get eaten. I'm just not going to get any food. So it just forces, it, it inherently forces them to eat more. Yeah, correct. More total. Hmm. And that affects what we're willing to eat in terms of how nutritious or palatable it is for them as well. And that goes back to why you don't need the multi-species then for that, because correct. that's partly why some do is taking care of the other plants that don't get eaten. Correct. This, this plant right in front of your post here, that's cockleburr, which is notoriously unpalatable and they've eaten all the leaves off of that and even some of the stem. So if you see this then, if it's not palatable, it's not a good one, but it's still kind of here, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Or so, is that even? So to find good, right? It's a pioneer species that grows in unbalanced soil. Soil grows what soil is most suited to grow. These pioneer species are almost like a scab on a wound. I don't fight the weeds. I let the weeds come in and then like the invasive thistles around here. If you go out and dig in your field, your best soil aggregates are gonna be where the thistles are because that pioneer species grows in poor aggregated soil with poor water infiltration that typically is low in calcium. They tap down a really deep tap root, bring up the calcium, and they build a lot of fungal networks around their roots as a forb, and the soil heals. When the soil heals, you come through and graze it hard. Everybody's so worried about the thistles taking over. In Oklahoma, there's even an invasive thistle law where you're required to manage them. <laughs> And so I had to submit with like the NRCS, our like management plan based on holistic like systems and yada yada. What we've seen happen, like we have fields that were 60, 70, 80% invasive thistle, two hard grazes, the thistles are gone. The next succession of species stepped in and the next palatable grass, right? Because as the thistle scabbed over and healed it, the thistle actually creates an environment the thistle no longer flourishes in and the next more palatable, more beneficial species moves in. So the weeds are really working for you if you give them a chance to do what they need to do in the soil, but give it a reset with the hard graze and a long enough rest period for the seed bank to actually fill back in again. <laughs> That's so cool. Which is, yeah, which is part of what I, why I love getting to do this and my just continually learning more and more. It's just the systems are there if you learn how they're supposed to work. And to me, it's just like nothing is random. It's, there's a reason why so, it's all happening. And exactly. that, as long as you're, yeah, that's, that's why I love this stuff. It's so fascinating. And then the cows are <laughs> wanting to say hello too. Um, is there any other things, bef 
because I'm good on questions. I don't know if there's anything else that you'd want to cover. I'm good. I, I, another metric that'd be nice to add and talk about mm -hmm. is um, I do this usually every three, four days. I go out and judge the, uh, I literally rank bullshit. So I do, I'll look at the manure around behind where the herd has been that day. And um, I'm doing that primarily to judge how, whether they're getting enough or too much protein in their diet. Um, so runny manure is high in protein, thick stacked up manure is low in protein. Um, so it say, can also be related to hydration levels. Um, say like, especially if a cow is not feeling well and not traveling back and forth to water as much, that can be a sign if you see she's still lying down and there's some really stacked up manure around her. Mm -hmm. But generally for the whole herd, um, it's important to keep an eye on that so that you can just know whether you're on track to be gaining weight or stagnating or even losing weight if they're not getting enough protein. Because body condition is a laggy indicator. It's the ultimate hard boundary of what you're trying to solve for. But rumens, manure, looking at palatability, looking at animal temperament, energy, a section moves are all leading indicators that let you kind of forecast where the animals are at to predict the future of how the tension is evolving between animal performance versus grassland management. So fascinating. <laughs>